Okay, this sermon's entitled The Blood. I'd like to go over the different the doctrine of the blood and um, explain uh, what the Bible says on this subject. Let me open with prayer, with a few verses. All right, to God, thank you for allowing me to um, preach this sermon and to explain what your word says. Let's pray that you'll allow me to um, be very clear on what your you know Bible says about the blood of Jesus and um, what Jesus has done for us in shedding his blood for us. Keep us safe as we listen and um, go over your word. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'd like to open up with uh, Exodus chapter um, 12. Let's look at a few verses here. In Exodus chapter 12, it reads in verse, let's see here. Let's start with verse... 21. It says, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel, and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. Now, first of all, this represents the, the, the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. The Bible says that in John chapter 1, verse 29. Behold, the Lamb of God that cometh to take away the sin of the world. So, this is just a picture of Jesus. This is a prophetic picture in the Old Testament. That's why it says, you know, draw out, take the lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it into the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the, the basin. And none of you sh shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. <clears throat> now look at verse 23. Represents... The fact that God does not look upon our sins because of the blood. I've heard somebody deny that. They were denying it. They said, show me in the Bible where, where, the, where God looks at the blood and doesn't look at our sins. Right here. False teaching liar out there. I'm not going to say his name. We should, we should know who he is. I may, I may say his name in the, at the end of this sermon. <clears throat> the, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon, his, upon the lintel, and on the two posts, two side posts, excuse me, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer, suffer means allow, the destroyer to come into, to come in unto your house to smite you. Now this is a picture of God looking upon the blood of Jesus Christ that covers all our sins and that has paid for all our sins. Okay? God's not going to, he's not going to, he said, the Lord will pass over the door. In other words, I'm not going to punish these people, I'm going to pass it over. That's why it's called the Passover. Okay, the blood represents Jesus Christ. Now turn to Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9. There's another verse I want to look at that proves, um, after this verse, it proves that uh, God does not see our sins because he sees the blood of Christ and that, that's it. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9. We're going to look at a lot of verses on the blood here, but I want to go ahead and just cover this one point. Okay, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. It reads... Now, the blood of goats and bulls and calves and all these animals is, is worthless. They, it didn't take away their sins in the Old Testament. It just <clears throat> was symbolic that, of, of Christ, who in fact did t take away all our sins. Because of, and, and he washed it away in his blood. I'm gonna, we're going to look at that. But look at verse nine, excuse me, chapter 9, verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. Okay? Now, how do we know it's talking about Christ? Let's back up to verse 11. Let's read verse 11. But Christ being come, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. So we know it's talking about Christ. Okay, now, it's, now let's read it again. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. Now look at this. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. You see that? He obtained eternal redemption for us by his blood. And we don't need to be mocking this. We don't need to be sitting there making stupid statements. The guy who said it was Dr. Brown. I'm just going to call him out. Dr. Michael Brown. He said, show me one verse where the blood, God looks at the blood. Yeah, shut your mouth, you false prophet, false teacher out there. <clears throat> I don't care if he hears this and puts it on his show. Hey, God sees the blood and that's what the Bible teaches. Okay? Okay, look at this. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer, what, what do you think he looks at here? He's, he, Christ goes into the temple, the, whole, the holy place. He entered in once 
with his own blood. You're telling me God is not looking at the blood? He's looking at our works or how we live? That was the implication of that stupid, you know, line of fire, whatever that thing was that I just happened upon. I don't I don't listen to all that garbage, all this all this false teaching out there. My point is, of course God sees the blood. Why would Christ enter into the to the to the holy place and and, and present his blood if God's not going to see that? If, I mean, if God's not going to see the blood. <clears throat> It doesn't make any sense. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of our flesh, excuse me, of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, there we go, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Okay? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions. There we go. Redemption of the transgressions. They're all washed away. They're all paid for. Okay? Redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of, in of eternal inheritance. Wow. We get, in we get eternal life based on the blood of Christ and what he did for us when he died on the cross for our sins. Based on nothing we do, everything he did. The blood washes our it just washes all our transgressions away, all of them. <clears throat> okay, now turn to Numbers chapter twenty-three. <clears throat> Numbers chapter twenty-three. I'm so sick of false teachers. I'm sick of liars. John MacArthur. Hey, this sermon's entitled "The Blood." John MacArthur denies the blood. I'm gonna ra I'm gonna rip on him now. And you know what? I I, I was heard that, that was just a rumor. That that was a rumor. Hearsay. That he used to deny the blood, but now he doesn't. Wrong. He still denies the blood as part as being, you know, our way of salvation. He denies the blood as being what saves us. He says it's just the death of Christ. Hey, that's that's a bunch of blasphemous garbage. Because hey, you're saying Christ could have been strangled to death, and no bloodshed? No, Christ shed his blood for us because he loves us. Now the Bible makes it very clear: if you're saved, you're saved by you're saved by faith alone in Christ alone. Believing in Christ is what saves you. And that's it. Okay? The Bible's clear. John, John 3.16. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. For it's, and I don't need to get it out of the way. It's a great verse. We need, we, need to keep, we need to keep hearing it. You only have to believe it one time. The moment you believe in Christ, you're saved forever. But people need to keep hearing John 3.16 so that eventually they get it memorized. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God gave his son. His son had to shed his blood for us. And the Bible makes it clear. We are redeemed by the precious blood. And we're going we're gonna to look at those verses here. But let's just take a look at a verse in Numbers chapter 23. God does not see our sins, even though we keep sinning. Now, this, is, this may seem radical. Hey, it's right here. Okay, look at verse 21. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. Because of the blood of Jesus, God does not see our sins. Now, what is, how can I get that from that? It says that God does not, he does not behold iniquity. Neither hath he seen perverseness. Does that mean Israel was not perverse and, and sinless? No. Everyone sins. But God doesn't see our sins. He does not going to look at it. He's not going to look upon our sins because he didn't look upon Jesus Christ when he was paying for our sins. That's why Jesus Christ said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was no longer Lord. It was no longer Father. Okay? It was, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He, he, couldn't, he couldn't identify him as Father. Because he had our sins put on him. Every last one of our sins was put on him at the cross. And he paid for every last one of them. Every single one of them. He paid for them all when he died and was, was buried and rose again. When he was crucified. Okay? Jesus Christ at one point said, I and my Father are one. But then he later on said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God was no longer identified as his, as his Father at that point because Christ was being, you know, was dying for our sins, being made sin for us who knew no sin. And that, so it was as if he committed all those sins. Every sin ever, that everyone's ever committed and still does commit was put on Christ. Imagine that. Okay? Imagine how much, you know, suffering he went through to, to die for the sins of the whole world. Every sin of every person who's ever lived from, from, from the beginning of time until now and, 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 then, and, and then some. Okay? Henceforth. 
He died for the sins of everyone. The Holocaust, murder, genocide, you know, all this, everything, every single thing, every single sin ever, anyone ever committed, that was always paid for by the blood. And this is what the Bible says. So God does not look upon our sins. Okay? He cannot see our sins. The Bible says, For as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. It also says, For their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. He cannot remember our sins. He cannot. And you can't see them now. And thank God for the blood. Because if it weren't for the blood, we'd all be in trouble. Now let me go over some verses that talk about the blood of Jesus covering our sins. Because people are, are afraid to talk about this. They get the NIV, that corrupt, devilish Bible, the NIV that says, that takes the blood, word blood out, and they, they, they don't want, you know, to talk about blood. They're hemophobic. <clears throat> okay? Now let's take a look at Colossians chapter. Actually, let's start with Ephesians. We're going to take a look at a lot of verses here. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1. You say, why are you getting so mad? I'm getting mad at people that want to blaspheme the blood. You know, and then and, and say it's not part of salvation. John Mc, John McGarbage is what his name should be. <clears throat> and I'm sick of it. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter... I've heard so many people say, you shouldn't be that hard on John MacArthur. He's a brother. Now, I don't consider him a brother in Christ. Consider him a child of the devil is what I consider him. Now, is he saved? I have no idea. Probably not. But why would a saved person say that? Why would a person who's, who's, who's a scholar, supposedly, who, has, who knows the Bible left and right, he's written all sorts of books. But, but why would he say something that's stupid, something that fatuous, something that, you know, absolutely, you know, inane? Why would he do that? Why would a man of God who knows the word of God say something so foolish like the blood, of, the blood is not sufficient for our salvation? <clears throat> It that doesn't make any sense. I'd like for an answer, but I'm not going to get an answer. Anyway, my point is, look at verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Now turn to uh, Colossians chapter um, 3. Colossians chapter 3. Let's see if I'm looking at the right verse here. Colossians chapter 2. I'm looking at the wrong verse. Take a look at uh, verse 13. Okay, this is not the right verse. It's not talking about blood. It's talking about this. It's the same. It's, it's talking about having all our sins forgiven. Let me just go ahead and read it. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. That's the same concept. But now let's back up to chapter 1. This is the verse I'm I'm, I was looking for. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Redemption. Salvation. Through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. Our sins are forgiven because of his blood. Not because of anything we do or don't do. Now turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. There's so much to say about the blood, it's not even funny, and it's, it's, it's a, this is a doctrine that we need to be studying, and we need to go over, and we need to, uh, we need to give God thanks for, for the blood of Jesus, because without it, nobody would be going to heaven. And because of it, everyone who believes on Christ is going to heaven. Because he's, he saved us with his own blood. Okay, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 8. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Okay, being justified by his blood. Oh, but, you know, that just, I just get so sick of these false teachers out there that deny this. Okay, let's go to Hebrews. Let's take a look at a lot of verses in Hebrews where it talks about the blood. There's probably more verses in Hebrews than any other book in the Bible on this subject. Now, I don't know for a fact that that's true. I believe that in the, other than Leviticus where it talks, there's a lot to say about blood. But my point is, let's just go down. Let's just look at a few verses here. Hebrews. I've got the verses that talk about the blood. I've got them. Um, I don't know about this Bible. One Bible I had, uh, them, them underlined in red. Hebrews chapter, okay, 
Now, the blood is what cleanses. In the Old Testament, all the blood could do is cover their sins. It just covered the sins. God would, God would not impose judgment on people if they were covered by the blood. But in the New Testament, it does more than just cover the sins. It washes them away. Now, let me find some verses on this. Okay, Hebrews chapter... We looked at we looked at chapter nine already, so let me go to another one. Okay, look go to chapter ten, Hebrews chapter ten. There's a lot of verses on the blood here. Okay, if you start off with verse two, it says, "For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Now that represents works." Do you know that? that, rep that back then, they, they, they would sacrifice goats and bulls and other animals. And, but this says right now, that, that's not going to take away anyone's sins. But the blood of Jesus will. Now, let's, let's keep reading. <clears throat> Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Okay? In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and not and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither has, hast pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Okay, now let's keep reading. Then said he, Lo, I came to do the will of God, he taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. In other words, this, this old covenant... He, he couldn't, it didn't do it. The, goat, the blood of goats and bulls was, was not enough. But now he's establishing the second, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Sanctification, a one-time event. Okay, that's one, that's, that's entire, that's called positional sanctification. And there's also experiential sanctification, which is, I'm not going to get into that right now. Okay, but my point is, Jesus Christ paid for our sins. He sacrificed himself. He was the offering once for all. Okay, let's keep going. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Any other offering, good works, any other ordinance, sacrament, you know, any, any other type of sacrifice could not take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Okay, now where does the blood come in? It's going it's to come in here in a minute. Here. Let's just keep reading. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those... Days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now look at this. Here's the blood. Okay. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. The blood's found in the next verse. Hey, there's, there's got to be blood. There's got to be a sacrifice. Okay. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We, should, we, can, we need to have boldness now to know we're going to heaven based on what Jesus Christ did for us. Hey, I have boldness. I, I know I'm, I'm going to heaven because when I stand in front of God on Judgment Day, he's going to say, hey, the blood covers all your sins because you believed on Jesus. You trusted in what he did. His, his, his blood is enough. It satisfies the wrath of God. Okay, now let's, let's, let's look at the next verse. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated... In other words, prepared for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So it's Christ's blood and Christ's death, his flesh, that was perfect. That's, what's gonna, that's what gives us. It's not going to give us. It's, it already gives us eternal life. It already gave us eternal life. Okay, now let me uh, look for some more verses on the blood here. Okay, now turn to Hebrews chapter 13. It says, look at verse uh, 10. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which, 
which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Now look at this. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Okay? He sanctified us with his own blood. The Bible even talks about him, him buying the church with his blood. Let me go to that verse. That's found in the book of Acts. Let's see if I can find that verse. I've got it marked. Okay, Acts chapter uh, 20. Look at verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. A church has been purchased by the blood of God, according to the, uh, this church anyway. So my point is, the blood is very important. Now turn to um, 1 Peter. Look at verse. Uh, look at chapter one, verse two. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Okay, it's Christ's blood that he keeps putting the emphasis on. All right. Now, if you take a look at uh, chapter one, let's start with verse um, sixteen, because it is written. <clears throat> be ye holy as I am holy. Now holy just means separated. It does not mean perfect. It means, means separate yourself from the world. Okay, now let's keep going. For if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, in other words, works, anything we do, or, or anything else, material, did not redeem us from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who was verily foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So it's saying that it's the precious blood of Jesus Christ, okay, that has redeemed us. Okay? The precious blood of Jesus Christ has redeemed us. Nothing we do. Okay, let me, let me grab some more verses here, and then we'll continue. Hang on. One second. All right, now let me go to another verse that kind of gives us a, a kind of a picture of what Christ has done in washing our sins away by his blood. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter um, 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Of course, verse 18, it's a picture of uh, our sins being washed away completely. Okay, so Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 reads, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now turn to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. When Jesus was teaching the, um, his disciples, when telling them how to um, take communion, he made it very clear that it's the blood that, that saves and washes our sins away. And he let them know that's what the uh, grape juice represented, the blood. So Matthew 26, verse 26 reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed, now look at this, for many, for the remission of sins. What does remission mean? Canceled. Remitted. Totally erased. Blotted out. So Christ shed his blood for the remission of sins. And, and communion is just simply a commemorative reminder of that. We commemorate, we think back to what he did 2,000 years ago at the cross, at Calvary. You know, when he was beaten and scourged and crucified, you know, for our sins. So it's, it's, for, it's for the remission of sins. That, that's, that's clear. 
Now, a lost person would would say, well, Jesus was promoting cannibalism. He's he's telling them to eat his flesh. No, it's just sim it's symbolic. Lost people don't have the they're blind. They can't understand the word of God, so they're not. It doesn't matter what they say. I've heard lost people literally, literally say that. <laughs> They've literally said. Um, Jesus promoted cannibalism when he, when he, when he, when he did communion. That just shows how blind they are. They can't, they don't, they take everything literally. They, they, they don't understand he's speaking, you know, figuratively, symbolically. And it doesn't really matter. A lost person was better off not even being born. The Bible makes that clear in verse 24, where it says, for that man, if he had, it, it would have been better if that man, or good for that man than if he had not been born. Judas Iscariot, of course, any lost person out there, it's be they were better off never being born because they're gonna they're gonna burn in hell forever. It's really sad, but nevertheless, those that are saved are saved by the blood, by Jesus Christ, and the blood is uh, just a, <clears throat> a way of knowing that all your sins are washed away. And there's a lot of verses on this, but let's take a look at a couple of verses on this in Revelation, Revelation chapter one. <clears throat> Now, there are hymns about the blood. I've got this hymnal here. Let me see if I can find it. Hang on one second. Okay, this I found this hymn. This is a pretty good hymn. Hang on one second. Let me uh, adjust this. The hymn's entitled, I Believe Jesus Saves. Now, I'm gonna go, we're going to look at Revelation chapter 1. We're going to look at that in a minute, but let me just go ahead and read this hymn. This is, a, this is a hymn about the blood, actually. I am coming to Jesus for, you know, for rest. Rest such as the purified know. My soul is a thirst to, to be blessed to be washed and made whiter than snow. I believe Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow. I believe Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow. To Jesus I give up my I give up my all. Now I don't really care for that part because it sounds like I give up my all, but it, nevertheless, you get uh, some of these hymns you just got to have to overlook cuz they just they don't say the right thing. Every treasure and idol I know for his fullness of blessing I call till his blood washes whiter than snow. I believe Jesus saves, and his blood washes whiter than snow. I believe Jesus saves, and his blood washes whiter than snow. I am trusting in Jesus alone. I like, I like that. Trusting now his, his salvation to know, and his blood doeth so fully atone. I am washed and made whiter than snow. I believe Jesus saves, and his blood washes whiter than snow. I believe Jesus saves, and his blood washes whiter than snow. That's a pretty good hymn. Because it's about the blood, and it's a good way to go over salvation and you know, my point is, we need to understand that His blood is why we're cleansed of all sin. Revelation chapter one, verse five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the Prince of the kings of the earth, unto Him that loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood. You see that? Christ washed us away from all our sins. No, it's not just past sins. It's, it's past, present, and future. All our sins have been washed away by his blood. Now, what's the point of him just washing away our past sins? Why am I bringing this up? Because there are people out there that are false teachers. They say he only died for our past sins. What's the point of that? If he only died for our past sins, then we, then we have to have another sacrifice for our future sins. No, he died for all our sins. Okay, and finally, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take, up, to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. So Christ has redeemed us, redeemed us completely. We're forgiven, we're saved, we're regenerated, we're redeemed by his blood. And that's, that's, that's good news. So this sermon's entitled The Blood. I just feel like I, I haven't done a sermon on this in a while. I have done a sermon on this, you know, probably over a, over a couple of years ago I have. But my point is, you know, I didn't quite go over all these verses and I didn't quite, you know, take it as far. The Bible is very clear. It's the blood of Jesus that uh, satisfies, the, it's satisfied, it's already done, the wrath of God. Okay. Are there more verses on this? Yes, there are, but my point is um, I've covered a lot of the main ones. And that's all I have. Let me close in prayer. God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon on this subject and to go over your word. It, this is a very important subject, and a lot of people are afraid to, 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 afraid to touch on it because they're afraid of the word blood. It's just, it, you know, I don't know what their problem is. My point is you, Christ shed his blood for our sins, and 
I just thank you for that. Keep us safe and keep us real. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.